for the watermark and across this I don't have a, a clean version of this question so um, this is Russell Limited from the 2020 exam craft mock a very straightforward cash budget nothing too difficult uh, in this um, so it's not like the, the DB one if you have a look at that it's quite tricky but this is a cash budget for March and April what are we told uh, we're told on sales that 25% of revenue will be for immediate cash. So we have cash sales and there's a 4% discount. So that I'm going to work that out just what that percentage is. So it's not 21%, it's 96% of 25%. Okay, so 96% of 25% is 24%. Okay, that's what it is. So we could, it's four, in effect, it's 4% of 25% is 1%. So you're taking away 1% from 25% to get to 24%. So that's how we're going to work that. There are 75% is for credit sales. Uh, these letters will pay their bills 60% in the month after sale and the remainder in the second month after sale. So it's the credit sales 60% and it's not six, it's not 60% and 15%. It's sixty percent of sixty uh, percent of seventy five percent. So in reality, that's forty five percent. We'll pay one month after, and the remaining uh, credit sales two months. The remaining. Um, 40%, so 40% of 75% should be 30%. And it is, so it's 30%. All right, so we've got our, our cash collection pattern. So what we do is we start with, uh, with the 21,000. 24% of it, of the sales, 21,000 will be collected immediately. You could go down to the next month and say 45% will be collected one month after. And then 30% of the 21,000 will be collected two months after. Okay, you can look at April. 24% of the 27,000 is collected in April. Uh, 45% of the 27,000 is collected in May, and then 30% of the 27,000 is collected in June. Okay, you can go to May's figure, 36,000, and we'll find 0.24 of that. Then we'll find 0.45 of the 36,000, and then we'll find 0.3. 36,000. Now, you know, normally I just go straight across, but you know, I'm doing it this way. But anyway, it is what it is. So, point, point 0.24 of June's then. So, June is 39,000. Uh, 0.45 of the 39,000. And then, uh, 0.3 of the uh, 39,000 is, is left there. So for July, the 42,000, we've got a 0.24 of the, of the 42,000, and then 0.45, and then I think that is, let's see, I can't really make it, that is, it's 39,000, I think. So for August, 0.24 is 9360. Okay, so we can just add those up. All right, um, and they should, no, I'm getting a different figure. Right. 
Okay, that's my sales. All right, so I move on then to my payments. So what have we got? We've got our purchases. So we'll read what's happening with our purchases. So the purchases will be paid for 50% of the month after purchase when there's a cash discount. So we've got credit one month. And there's a cash discount of 3%. So it's 97% of 50%. will be 1.5% taken away, so 0.485 or 48.5% is going to be my number I'm going to work off. Okay, and the remainder is in the second month after purchase, so 50% is, uh, is uh, two months after. So that's 0.5. So I'm going 0 and 0. So we've got 12.6, so 0.485 uh, is 6.111, and then 6.3 for two months after. 50% of 12.6 is 6.3. So 0.485 by 16.2, and then that can't be right. Extra two there, sixteen two. Uh, so that'll be what's that? Eight one then. Fifty percent of sixteen two is eight one. We move on to the next one, twenty one six. So point four eight five by twenty one six is ten uh, four six seven, and twenty one six half of that would be uh, sixteen eight. So for June then it's 23.4. So 0.485 by June's figure is 23.4. And of course that's going into July is uh, 11.349 and 0.5 of 23.4 will be 11.7. And then July's figure. 25, Jesus, I can't see that at all. 25.2, I think. So 0.485 by uh, 24 something, 25.2 is 12222, and that's the figure I'm going to go with anyway in this. So that's my purchases done. Uh, so the cash payments. Um, Expected costs, wages, 15 per month. So nice and easy, just 1,500 a month. Just slot them in. Uh, then we've got um, variable overhead, 50 per unit payable as incurred. Now, each unit costs 3,000. So we're going to take the 20... 1,000 and we're going to divide that by 3,000. So 21,000 units divided by 3,000 will give you 7 units. And we're paying a, a variable overhead of 50. So 50 by 7 is uh, 350. For the next one, 27,000. 27,000 divided by 3,000 is 9. So 9 by 50 is 450. Uh, then we have 12 units sold in May, 36,000 by 3 is 12, uh, 12 by 50 is 600. Obviously then for June it's 39,000 divided by 3 is 13 units, so 13 by 50 is 650. Uh, then we've gone up to 42, so that's another unit, so another 50 is 700. And then back down to 39, so it'll be 650 again there okay so um that's our variable overhead done a fixed overhead is four thousand a month but includes depreciation so what's their depreciation on we bought some sort of a machine so the machine was bought in on the first of march for twenty thousand and it's got an estimated useful uh, useful life of 10 years 
So it's going to go down by 2,000 a year. So the depreciation, I'll just come down and move down here. So the depreciation is 2,000 a year. So 20,000 divided by 10 is 2,000. So per, per month, it's going to be 2,000 divided by 12. which is 166, okay, uh, there might be, it's got a residual value of 2,000, oh my God, so it's only 18,000 divided by 10. Okay, again, just rushing through the question, so it's 1,800 a year. So anytime you get a decimal place, just think, is it right? It can be right, of course it can, but uh, there's a good chance it's wrong, so that should be 1,800 divided by 12, so it should be 150. It is, so the fixed overhead of 150, we have to take away, sorry, the depreciation of 150 from the fixed overhead. So the fixed overhead is 4,000 minus 150, so 3850. So I'll just slot them in each month. So I've put the machine in then. Uh, we partly financed by a loan of 15,000 at 12% per annum. So the capital sum is to be repaid in 50 equal installments um, so we're going to have a loan instalment and we're going to have loan interest. So the loan instalment begins uh, on the 1st of April. So each loan instalment is 15,000 divided by 50. So you're paying back 300 each month. Now, the interest is calculated on the amount outstanding. So we've gotten a loan of 15,000. So the loan interest for the first month is 12% of 15,000. Okay, and, and we're gonna have to divide our answer by 12 to find the monthly rate. So that's 150. So the loan interest for the first month is 150. Now you've paid back 300 off the loan. So 15, the loan interest for the second month will be 12% of 14,700 divided by 12. Which is 147. Now, it's going to go down by three euros every month. So if we pay three, if we pay three hundred off, you can just check that twelve percent of three hundred divided by twelve will be three. This is one percent of three hundred. So, uh, so it's going to be three euros off every month. Okay, because every time we pay three hundred euros off, we have to pay three euros less interest. Okay, so that's our loan interest. Uh, okay, the interest for each month, so we've done that. So then bank overdraft. The bank has a sanction and overdraft for us. The terms of the overdraft are the limit is 10,000 and the interest is charged at 1.5% per month payable one month after. Now, this is interesting because we've never seen this before, but hopefully we'll be able to work this out. We can't actually work it out for a little while because we don't know what the bank overdraft is. So the bank overdraft interest is whatever it is, right? So we have to say, well, what's the net cash? So the net cash position, or sorry, the total expenditure is 25,850 for the first month. Okay, so it's payable one month after, right? So the net cash is 5040. It's 5040 minus the 25850, and then we have to put in the loan, and we got the loan uh, of. Where's the loan? 
left 15,000 alone, and we've opened in cash zero. So the closing cash, and this is what we will work out our, our, our bank overdraft interest on. Our closing cash is 20,040. So our closing cash has to be a minus. It's minus 5810. So we're going to work out the interest on the overdraft of, of 5810. So it's 1.5% per month. So we're going to have to find out 1.5% of 5810. 0 0.015 by 5810. So we've got an interest of 87.15. Now I'm just going to round that to 87 because there's no way I'm working in decimal places. So we then add all those up. And we're going to have 15,930 minus 12,445. We've no loan, but we've got our opening cash of 5,810, which means our closing cash is minus 2,325. And we'll have to work out our overdraft on that. So 1.5% of 0 0.0015 by 2325 is 340 almost one too many zeros there is 3485 so I'm just gonna call that 35 no way as I said am I am I working in decimal places and check what the market scheme goes after so we're gonna take them away hopefully that's the end of our overdraft stuff I want it way too much on there we go so 6504 so 4179 is our closing cash figure so we, we don't have back overdraft anymore so we can forget about that for the time being um, and long may that continue let's take them away from each other So we get 12822, we bring that forward. Um, again, no, uh, no overdraft required. That's 7034. That's it. Should I can't be seven oh three four? So I'm, oh, there's a minus. Sorry. So twenty eight six three seven. Then it's nine seven nine three. And we're finished now with our bank overdrafts. There's no more. Um. 4410 minus 3397 is 10.053. And then we finish with 3268. Uh, okay. So that's us finished with that. Um, we we'll probably have to do the no, there, where appropriate, make it to the nearest URL. So it even told us to do that, thankfully. All right, so prepare a profit and loss account. So budget a profit and loss account. Um, remember, there's no opening and closing stocks in these because we don't have opening and closing stocks. So our cost of sales is just all of our expenses, excluding our depreciations, discounts, and loan interest. So what's our sales, right? So our sales is the total 204,000. Okay, so our cost of sales then. So we have our uh, open our purchases and our purchases one two two four hundred. 
Then we've got our, uh, we'll go through our expenses. We've got wages, 1500 a month um, by six. That's 9,000. We've got our variable overhead, which was, uh, which was a per unit. Um, just add them up, but our variable overhead is 50 units, so 204 divided by 7,000. I'm sorry, divided by 3,000 per unit. And we're gonna multiply that by our cost per unit, which is 50. And that gives us uh, 3,400. Our fixed overhead, now that's a figure from the question, it's um, 3850 and that's by six months so 23,100 uh, now then we've got we'll just take them away as our cost of sales and that'll give you a gross profit of that much uh, we have to add on to that the discount we received so the discount on our purchases so we received a discount of four percent so we received a discount of uh, of three percent of fifty percent of our purchases and we don't include the August amount so the discount is going to be three percent of total purchases one two two four hundred, but we have to take away the twenty three thousand four hundred because um, it's three percent of fifty percent of that because we're only getting a discount on the cash sales element and our, our sorry the first months so we're, we have we don't get our August discount until September so it's 0 0.03 by 0 0.5 by one two two four hundred minus twenty three four. So that's 1485. So that's what we're going to add on. Okay, now from those, we're going to take away our expenses. And our expenses are our depreciation and the discount that we give. So the depreciation was. Uh, 150 a month, so uh, 150 by 6, which would be 900. And the discount allowed is the discount on sales, which was 4% of 25% of our cash sales, or of our total sales. So our cash sales is 25%, so it's 4% of 25% of 204,000. So that's 2040. So that's 2940 in total, which we'll take away. So that's our net profit. I don't know why that's in red. That's in, in the previous question. Sorry. Now, from those, we have to take away our interests. So we've got our interest on our loan, which is 150 plus. Just total them 150 plus 147 plus 144 plus 141 plus 138 plus 135 so it's 855 but then you also have your which is new for this question we would have a bank overdraft interest so a bank overdraft interest is uh, 87 plus 35 is one two two so our so the net, rather than net profit that would be operating profit so our net profit is those taken away okay so forty three six six eight all right so just the the bank overdraft interest uh, was new so Right, this is part C, calculate.
value of trade debtors and trade creditors on the 31st of the 8th. So creditors are people we owe money to. Uh, debtors are people that owe us money. So that's straightforward enough. So our trade debtors on the 31st of the 8th. So 8th is is August. So people who owe us money in August are people who are uh, people we sold to in July and in August. So so what have we got? So July sales of forty two thousand. Now, 75% of that are credit, of which 40%, or 60% are paying one month after, so 40% are gonna owe us money at the end, uh, in August. So 40% of the 75% of 72,000. And then our August sales, that's our July sales, so I'll just not mark that in as July. So, from our July, our two month people owe us money. From our August, it's our one month people. So 39,000. And 75% of them, actually all of our, our 75% of our, of our July sales are owed. So not just the one month, the two months. So all of the credit sales of August are owed at the end of August, but only the, the first, uh, or the second month of July, so I don't know if that makes sense. All of August, at the end of August, all of the 75% is owed at the end of August, but the July's ones, 40% of it is still owed. So the 60% of the 75% has been paid, but the 40% is outstanding. So that'll be... So 12, 6, and... August, all of it, so uh, 75%. Uh, so 29.250 is outstanding. So the two rows together, you're going to be your debtors at the end of, at the end of, um, at the end of August. So if you just think back, what's out at the end of August? All of August credit sales, and the second month of July's credit sales are out into August. If you look at our creditors. We've got our, we're going to have July and August. So all of our stuff is on credit, right? So all of August is on, uh, all of August is out on our purchases. So the 23.4. But only half of July's, now you ignore the discount here. So 50% of the 25.2 is out in July. And that's 12, six, so we'll add them together. All right, so 36,000 is our creditors. I don't really know why they're asking that. Um, so that's the money that, that we owe in uh, in July, ignoring all discounts, okay? Um, what factors would a business like Russell consider before launching a new product? Well, that's not really accounting, but what would you consider in business? You'd consider, is there a market? Uh, what are the costs? This is more leaving sort of business now than leaving sort of accounting. Uh, what price will we charge? Uh, what service to give? Uh, where will we sell? So all that kind of stuff will be factors that you consider. So that's that, I hope that works out just, might look back over that trade debtors and trade creditors again. It's how much do you, is owed. It's how much of our sales is owed to us at a certain point, uh, and how much of our purchases do we owe at a certain point. That's what we're looking at. All right, we'll see you again.